wanna work for yourself and run your own business, you need to learn to manage your time. Before you start a business, ask yourself, where does that land on your priorities? As we're filming this right now, my phone is buzzing. There's another problem in my business that they need me to solve, but I'm filming this and this is my priority. You're a business owner, people are going to be asking for your time all of the time. So learning to say no is a skill you've got to figure out now. What's going on everybody? It's me, Jason from Buy, Build, Sell, your Los Angeles contractor and developer. And today we are going to be talking about time management. Now, over the last 12 years, I've built a business that has, thank God, done very well. One of the things that I can attribute to that, one of the things that I think people wonder about how I do what I do and yet still keep my priorities in line with my family and you know a personal life essentially is I've learned time management. And here's some of the things that I think I can teach you about what I've learned over the past 12 years that might help you when starting your own business. So when starting out, especially in the construction business, your time is consumed by your projects, by your clients, by everybody that's around you your employees, your office staff, everyone has questions. And one of the easiest ways to kind of alleviate that part of it is really creating processes and procedures, but we're not getting into that today. But I can just, I, you know, I go back in time eight years ago and I remember staying with my in-laws at their house for the weekend. And I got this call from a neighbor who said that the water line busted at, at the construction site that we were that we were working at and it's like eight o'clock at night i'm thinking i'm gonna go see a movie with my wife the kids are being watched by the in-laws that'll be great we'll go out we'll have some fun get this call it's an emergency level thing i mean you got water spewing from the main lines of a house you can't like say let me get back to this let me you know figure out how to forget about what's happening over here and i want to go to a movie with my wife. I, I remember I, I went into my, my father-in-law's uh, toolbox. I grabbed all the tools that I could possibly get because uh, I did not have my truck on me. And I drove out to that job site, which was probably about 45 minutes away, did what I had to do and then came back uh, and then went out, went out with my wife. Uh, th thankfully, you know, my night was not ruined, but it took me that extra time to do that. And I can just think back to really that moment and go, okay, how come I haven't had to do that? That exact scenario or even things like that in so long, you know, how, how come then I was that guy who had to do it, but today I'm not that guy. Well, there's a few reasons to it. Um, truthfully, just building a business as you grow, people grow underneath you and you're able to build a team that kind of is able to take on that type of responsibility, which is just overall really nice. And um, there's this concept of just paying people for your time, which is really just, you know, if, if, if I felt at that time that maybe that task, I don't want to say the word beneath me, but maybe um, it was a task that I could have delegated and I would have been willing to pay somebody for that task to not have to drive out to the job and turn off the main line and you know and go back home, maybe I would have been willing to pay somebody else for my time, for my time to have my time to myself, I would pay someone else for their time to go to the job site and do that. So I think going back then to now, I'm much more open to that idea of, you know, my time is valuable for me. I, I prioritize the time that I want for myself, for the things that I do for myself, for my family, and, and all of those sort of things. So it's easy for me to say, yeah, just pay the guy, go do it, go handle that. And truthfully, I, you know, trying to emulate people that I see being successful and um, seeming to have a really good balance of work life and really, you know, they seem to just have it all figured out. Like, you know, you can think of Mark Cuban as being a, a, a decent example. Again, I don't know him, never met him, but you see him all over the place. Hundreds of companies, billions of dollars, and then he's posting videos with his daughter on TikTok. So, to me, I'm looking at that going, hey, this guy prioritized 
that moment in his life to do that video with his daughter because it meant something to him uh, or, or maybe it meant something to her and he and she means something to him. So she, he's gonna do it for her, right? Um, and even growing up, honestly, like my dad was an entrepreneur and you know, it's it always, it's always such a wonderful story to hear uh, someone say, you know, I didn't know my dad very much. He was always working and he was busting his, you know, his blank to, to really provide for me, my mom, my, my siblings, my family. It's a wonderful story. Don't get me wrong. Um, I, my heart knows what that feels like, knows what that looks like. Um, I see it many times and there are people out there who really do just work hard to provide for their families. But if I can look back at how I grew up seeing my dad, you know, he was never absent. He prioritized the birthday parties at school and uh, he was so big at bringing cupcakes and uh, donuts to school on my birthday. And that, you know, even if he'd come home late from work, he brought home toys uh, from downtown Los Angeles. And um, on Sunday mornings, we'd come downstairs and he'd be at, at the dining room table doing estimates and takeoffs and working hard. So that way at eight o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning or whatever time it was, you know, he would take us all to the gym and there would be a play place there. And then he'd go out with us for breakfast with my, my mom, obviously, and she's along for the ride. But I'm just saying like, uh, you know, I never felt like even though my dad was an entrepreneur and working really, really hard, there always just seemed to be time for him to take care of us. And I try to emulate that into my life as well. The first thing you need to understand is that building a business takes time, it takes time, energy, devotion. It's a, it's a whole project that you need to commit yourself to. If you can't commit to that, don't get started. But even when you look at business owners today who seem to have all the time in the world, oh, I run this business, I own this business, I run this business, and it's all gravy right now. I guarantee you, if you went to talk to them about their first few years in business, they were cutting their teeth. They were working 14 to 18 hour days. They were bleeding the business that they were in. So there's a lot of distractions and a lot of commitments that they're probably letting go of just to commit to the business. As I talk to you right now, there's distractions. Like, like hey. these, these cute little guys, say hi. 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 Okay, well, real life proof that distractions happen all the time. My point is, is there's always going to be a meeting that needs to be scheduled, a, an email that needs to be answered, a phone call that needs to be answered, a text that needs to be responded to. There's always going to be something. So you have to take those moments and prioritize them. It's not necessarily about blocking out your schedules or doing things like that. I mean, we can definitely get into some of the topics of those and those ideas definitely work for some people, but there's always decisions about where you're gonna put your time and those decisions make a massive impact on your business. There's the, there is the concept of blocking out time and making time slots for everything that you need to do in your, your work day. So you have the availability to for personal life. There was a really cool idea that I read in a book. I don't have it with me to show you, um, but Jay Shetty had an idea in his book, uh, Think Like a Monk, that was about if you do the tasks that you need to do in the area in which you normally do them in. So for example, uh, people find that they're very successful in their office because in their office they attack emails and they answer texts and phones about work. And then if they're outside that space, they're not going to be as effective as they would be if they were in their office. Uh, if you have a space where you do yoga every morning, uh, you're going to be really effective at doing yoga there every single morning. Then as opposed to if you changed up your location constantly, right? Uh, it was just a really cool point. Even if we take this concept outside of business and we talk about every morning you need to decide to go to the gym, like going to the gym could be a positive experience, but are you going to choose to go to the gym or are you gonna focus your priorities on making sales calls, right? Another thing could be maybe you wanna take your family on vacation for a week, but you go on vacation 
but all you're doing is answering emails about work or you're not really enjoying the time that you're having with your family because of that. So every single thing in your life has priorities. The best way to balance those things are to make decisions about those things in every moment that you're living in. When you start your business, I think everyone thinks that they can do it. They can magically juggle everything that's gonna be happening around them, their work life, their family life, their personal goals. Um, but they find most of the time that it's pretty tricky. It's not an easy thing to figure out. And even what I'm telling you, you may understand it, but you may feel like it's hard to put into practice. But the truth is, is that all you have to do is think about your priorities in every moment and then make the decision for it. Yes, sometimes you'll regret the decision, but most of the times you'll be able to go back and say, that was my priority at the moment. A good example would be you go to your kids play. You really want to experience that experience for them and with them, but you get this really important call happening right at the beginning of the play. And you know that, that call might take 30 minutes. You might miss the whole thing. So the question is, do you send the call to voicemail? Do you call them and text them or say, hey, can I call you right back? I'm in a play. Or do you walk outside the auditorium and take the call? Now, no answer is wrong, but if you feel like you can't juggle your work-life balance, which, which part is failing? And notice the response that you're giving right now to this video. That could be your fault right there. Because the truth is, is that call that came in, that call can wait. The reverse of it is that they couldn't wait. You don't know, but you're not gonna be upset if you follow your priorities. If your priority is making sure that your kid sees you and knows that you're there for them, then that's your priority. If your priority is the sale or whatever it is that phone call is about, then that'll be your priority. Whatever your decision is or whatever your priorities are in the moments that you're living those priorities or those moments, try to really feel connected to those moments. For instance, I just took a family vacation to uh, Legoland and something that I did is I put my phone in a bag and really checked it very few times. What You know, checked it for the time, whatever. Uh, you know, tried to spend a few, like be available in the mornings, seven to nine, because I know I get a lot of calls then, and uh, try to check my phone at the end of the day. And I really tried to be off of my phone, you know, in the middle of the day and really focus on my family and where I was. I really tried to absorb those moments as opposed to trying to juggle both of them. There's always going to be tests in life and not everything is so black and white. People really wanna believe that there is this systematic approach to achieving the balance, but there really isn't. It's a constant decision that you need to make. Like I said, no decision is wrong. It's all about what's, what's a priority to you in each and every moment. Now you might take everything I just said and think, okay, so focus on business make that the priority well no that's not what i'm saying while there are different kinds of methods for scheduling your time not everything works for everyone so we can definitely dive into more of those and do a deeper dive into some of the blocking schedule type ideas but overall even in those systems you know they say okay block out an hour at four o'clock in the morning for your your shower and your maintenance and all that stuff and then you know five to six for your workout and six to seven for breakfast, whatever, all of these ideas. But even in those things, the only reason why it really works is because you're awake so early that no one's bothering you. Uh, and then you have time for everything else. That's all that really is. But even so, even in those things, you can get distracted. You can get caught up in all of the things that you kind of want to use for your free time. So don't get me twisted. What I find interesting is most of the time when people get frustrated, about not being able to balance their life and work. It's mostly personal things. It's not, I can't find the time to talk to my secretary and I can't find the time to make that sales call and I can't find the time to you know, give a good job to the guy who's doing this job. It's, I don't have time for the gym, I don't have time for the, my girlfriend or my boyfriend, I don't have time for Saturday night parties anymore. Oh, I'm too tired or, 
whatever those things are. Well, people discard those things because they think that they're removing the, the noise from their life and focusing on what's important to them. That could be true, but it could also be argued the other way. If you take the time to work out, you might build confidence, build the ability to uh, you know, be able to stand in front of a crowd better, lead people better, uh, you know, drive motivation better. If you spent time with your you know, better half, your, your spouse or whatever, uh, you know, you'll learn better communication skills. You'll create a better sense of sensitivity to people's feelings. There's a lot of benefits to that. So there's driving forces either way. Also, uh, you know, spending time with your friends, uh, there's endorphins that are released that kind of release the current pressures that are in your body and in your mind and give you the sense of feeling like things may not actually be as hectic as they actually are. There are two sides to the coin and choosing business every time is not necessarily the answer. I've seen countless people grow you know, massive businesses by being able to do everything that they wanna do. And if you take the time to really grow your business as the business grows, they'll need you less and less because hopefully you're building it right. And with that, the main skill you really need to harness is delegation and then priorities. Hopefully this video helped you understand a little bit more about time management and what goes on behind it. There's a lot of complexity to it. It's not an easy answer, but I really hope that this did help bring you some clarity to this space. If this video helped you and you want to see more videos just like it, please go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.